Welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at uh, the biblical pattern uh, for a family, old, young, and children to come together uh, in, for a time of worship, praise, for prayer, repentance, uh, hearing of the reading of scripture and uh, salvation. So we looked at uh, uh, worship and praise. Um, we look at prayer. Um, an example we see is in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20, uh, where King Jehoshaphat is faced with, uh, you know, these three armies that are coming, marching against him. So he um, asks all of his people to fast and to assemble in the temple. And then, you know, this, is, uh, this chapter is basically uh, him praying out to God in front of all the people. And... Um, so he says uh, in verses 12 and 13, he's telling God that, you know, uh, God, we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. Uh, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And then it says that all the men of Judah with their wives and children and the little ones, you know, uh, stood there before the Lord. So we see that, you know, they are faced with this uh, huge uh, three armies coming to fight against them. Uh, everyone is supposed to fast and pray, including uh, that animals are, you know, the are fasting, everyone this time. And, uh, you know, the parents bring even the children and the little ones um, at this very important time. You know, uh, they don't leave them out. You know, sometimes we think, uh, you know, why should we take children to church? Why should we send them to children's church? Let them be at home. Let them watch a cartoon. Uh, let them just play, you know. Um, but look at the importance of uh, here, you know, the Israelite community bringing their children, their little ones, and standing before the Lord as one uh, a, a group of people. And uh, for their children even to uh, to learn, because, you know, here you know, uh, there was the Spirit of the Lord comes on Jezeel, and he prophesies, and he tells the king what to do. And, uh, you know, uh, when Jehoshaphat leads the army the next day, they go and they find, uh, uh, you know, all of their uh, enemies fought within themselves and all lying there dead on the battlefield with a huge amount of uh, you know, uh, things that they have left behind. So it's a big learning experience for uh, uh, children. So, you know, even at times uh, we don't take children for fasting prayer, right? Uh, we think, uh, why should children fast? Children can't fast. You know, um, uh, why should we take them for fasting prayer? They they will just trouble us. They'll bother us. They won't understand. But look at the importance here of, uh, you know, children and little ones even being there in the time of fasting prayer just to inquire um, of the Lord. You know, and it's good that even children can fast. Uh, there are other uh, th there are children from other religious groups who fast and pray. Um, I remember I went to, uh, you know, a part of the school outreach ministry of, um, of APC called Catalyst. And I go to schools and teach scripture in schools. And once I was waiting for my class, I was sitting in the reception in one of the schools. And there was a, a young boy, you know, maybe in grade four or five, uh, sitting next to me. And um, it was pretty early in the morning, just the first to second hour had gotten over. And so um, I knew that he was waiting for his parents to come and pick him up uh, to go home. So I asked him uh, what happened. He said, I'm not well. I asked him, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, how, what, uh, I mean, how are you unwell? He said, I'm having a bad tummy ache. So I said, you didn't have a, a breakfast this morning. Uh, he said, no. So I said, oh, maybe it's because you didn't have breakfast. Your stomach is, uh, you know, maybe there's gastric acidity. And so, you know, uh, uh, you know you, that's why you are having a stomach ache. Um, and I said, why didn't you have breakfast? And he said he was fasting. And I immediately knew, you know, um, uh, because it was this whole uh, a religious group who, a season of fasting and praying for them. And I was shocked because he was such a young boy and I asked him, which grade are you in? And he said, I'm in grade four. And I was like, wow, you know, uh, 
great for uh, this young age, uh, you know, so zealous for his God and, uh, you know, so part of the uh, the rituals of his, uh, the, the, this religious group. I, I was just thinking, you know, when I was in grade four, did I fast and pray? You know, I was just thinking that and I was just saying, man, these people really and the way they bring up their children and uh, teach them the ways of the Lord and they are so zealous for their faith and for their uh, God. So it's okay if, you know, children, part of the fasting prayer, it's good for them to learn because it's part of what we see that is in um, scripture. Okay. Um, children were also part of... Um, the, the repentance when they would repent before the Lord. Uh, Ezra chapter 10 verse 1, we read that uh, Ezra was praying and confessing and weeping and throwing himself down before uh, the house of God. And a large group of Israelites, it says, men, women and children gathered around them and they too wept bitterly. And why did they weep? Because uh, they knew that they had, uh, you know, they uh, they were they were struck. They were convicted of their sin. Um, they knew they had broken God's law. They had not kept His laws, His covenant, um, and they needed to confess and repent along with uh, the scribe, along with the priest um, um, Ezra. And they were so sorrowed over their sin. Um, of this uh, uh, as a covenantal co community, uh, just as Ezra had done, they all were reaping and uh, confessing and, uh, you know, repenting before God. And so we see that even children were part of this process and they were learning what it means to repent, what it means uh, not to break the heart of God, what it means to keep the covenants, the laws that God had um, given them. Children were also, as part of the covenantal community of Israel, a part of the hearing of the reading of scripture. And uh, we read this in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 2. Can somebody read that, please? Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 2. Anyone oh, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. Thank you, uh, John Paul. So here it says in the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law, you know, uh, and he was reading it out to the men, women and all who were able to understand, which means it included children as well, children were able to understand. So, you know, it's uh, important that we read scripture to children and also get them to read scripture because it's part of, uh, uh, you know, what uh, we read in scripture, what we read in Bible. Also, children, uh, you know, are uh, part of the salvation plan of God. Uh, and we, uh, we read in scripture that there is no age limit uh, set for the gift of salvation and even for the baptism of the Holy um, Spirit. Look at uh, what it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. Can somebody read that, please? Acts 2, 38 and 39. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Amen. So here we see that, you know, Peter saying, uh, repent and be baptized. That means salvation is for everyone. Forgiveness of sins is for everyone. So can we uh, teach um, uh, uh, salvation? Uh, this message of salvation to children who are four, five, six, seven years old? Can we? Yes, no? Can we lead children who are in, uh, you know, children who are five, six, seven, eight years uh, to accept Jesus Christ? Can we do that? Yes. Yes. Uh, because, yes, we can. Because here it says, you know, repent and be baptized, everyone the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And he says, you will risk. Can children also be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yes. 
Yes, we can teach the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, for children. We can lead them uh, into uh, the baptism, uh, uh, you know, of the Holy Spirit. We can pray for uh, them to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because here it says the promise is for you and for your uh, children. Okay, so baptism of the Holy Spirit is not just for adults, but also for children. I remember, you know, after the pandemic, when we started um, baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, when we started gathering um, in church, it was in-person services again. The first baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was amazed uh, that we had, um, I think we had six people. And out of that, where four of them were children, you know. Uh, one of uh, of course was in, in engineering school then his sister was in grade uh, five or six and then we had uh, two of them who were as small as in grade three and four who uh, joined the baptism of the holy spirit and um, in our church we had uh, the last sunday the previous sunday we had baptism of the holy spirit and there was only one person and that was a child who was in eighth grade uh, so yes, children can be taught about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they can be baptized in the Holy um, Spirit. Okay, so we see that, uh, you know, the importance of ministering to children uh, uh, by looking at the biblical basis uh, and the mandate or the order and the command that is given to us in scripture for us uh, to teach uh, children. And we see that how children were so an integral part of the covenantal community um, of Israel and the children are part of the covenantal communi community today that is the church and uh, um, they should also be included in various aspects of the church life and they should be trained and taught how to uh, meaningfully participate in various aspects of uh, church life okay um, we look at how you know Jesus um, ministered to children and how ministering to children uh, was a priority uh, for Jesus. Uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. It's on your screen. Can somebody read that, please? Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Amen. So here we see that, you know, parents brought their uh, children to Jesus so that he can place their uh, place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Why do you think the disciples rebuked them? Why do you think the disciples rebuked them? They would have thought it might be disturbance for Jesus. <laughs> okay, they would have thought it would have been a disturbance for Jesus. Okay, thank you. Yes, Jafina? Okay, so Jafina says it's. Uh, they would have thought it's not important for them. Uh, it's not for them. Okay. Um, Yes, the disciples didn't think that children should be ministered to. Um, uh, they didn't think they were a priority. They didn't think they would, they didn't sense they had such uh, Im uh, important pressing needs for them to be ministered to. Uh, but we see that uh, Jesus did, you know, that's so wonderful. Uh, he made time to minister to uh, the little children that, uh, you know, the parents brought to him. Um, the children are precious in God's sight. He loves them. Uh, he, you know, he wants children to be brought to uh, him. Uh, and we read this in, uh, we read also in uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. Can somebody read that, please? It's on your screen. Thank you. So Jesus says, unless you become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. What did Jesus mean here? Uh, like their kind of faith. Okay, their kind of faith, their kind of trust. Okay. 
Jesus actually values their nature and their character. Their nature and character is just abandoning themselves to the care and the trust of their parents or to their teachers. So whatever the teacher and the parent tells them, they will just do exactly like that. Okay. The, if the 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 if the parent says the sun is the moon for the child, the sun will be the moon. You can't change it for them. Okay. It's just basic trust and you know that they have the deep trust they have and the way they abandon themselves to the care of their parents and the trust of the parents so jesus says you know uh, we need to have that kind of approach in life uh, which is an essential quality um, for all um, believers so just like parents felt the need uh, for their children to be ministered to by jesus um, so also Today, children uh, need, um, you know, help. They need help in navigating in today's world. Uh, they need actually the more of Jesus, uh, uh, and you know, because they have a, a life ahead of them. Uh, sometimes we think that you know, children don't go through the kind of problems, the challenges, the difficulties that like adults do, and uh, they are not in that place or position that they need to be ministered to, like. Adults, what do you all think? Is that true? What do you all think? Children don't face that greater challenges, difficulties, and problems like adults do. And so, you know, they're still young. You don't agree with that? Okay. What do the others think? Any thoughts? Okay, uh, Divya says not true. Says uh, Zelutuli says no. Uh, you know, just like adults, you know, even children today face war, terrorism. You know, their parents divorce. Their parents are going through a hard time. Children are also facing the consequences of their parents' di divorce. Their parents fighting or uh, the marital discord that uh, that is there among the parents. You know, uh, just like adults um, are facing crime, rape, the pandemic, abuse. Uh, you know, pressure, peer pressure, social media other anxieties, even children, you know, uh, go through it. Maybe the magnitude of what they go through is not as greater uh, like adults do, but they're also faced, because they're living in the same world, they, they also face the same challenges uh, like you and I uh, do. So yes, they need help to cope and to deal with situations uh, and to face the situations that they're going through just like we um, adults do. And um, just like the pandemic had uh, such a great impact on, on on our lives, you know, some of us were able to deal with it and handle it uh, because as adults. But I noticed that the pandemic had a huge and a greater impact in the lives of children. You know, when I got back to schools after the pandemic, I just uh, I could not just uh, imagine uh, the way children were behaving. Uh, you know the disorder that was there, the kind of uh, um, uh, the kind of behavioral problems, uh, the uh, you know uh, the lack of uh, concentrating in class, the way they were treating each other. I was just thinking, what's happening? You know, am I really back in schools? What's happening to these children? And I realized that just two three years of them confined to the home and uh, you know and the pandemic has such such a great impact on their minds and their lives that they were struggling actually to cope and it was such a issue in the schools and all the teachers were finding it very challenging very difficult the parents were finding it challenging and difficult themselves and the children also they could not actually express themselves but it was just showing out in their uh, behavior so yes you know um uh, they just need so much more of Jesus. Um, they need so much help to cope and to deal with situations that they're facing, uh, just like we adults uh, do. And when uh, Jesus gave us this command to preach and teach the gospel, uh, like he did in, um, in Mark chapter 6, verse uh, 15, I'll just put that on the screen, where Jesus says, you know, go and tell all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay, we see that uh, whether it is Jesus teaching about 
uh, preaching and teaching the gospel, baptizing people, whether it's about Holy Spirit baptism, uh, we see that he does not specify any particular age group, but the command included people of all ages and all people groups. So look at what he says in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, when he says, go and uh, preach and teach the gospel he says, he does not give any specific age, but says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, um, uh, look at what uh, the Great Commission, which we read in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, where Jesus says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that he has commanded them. Uh, here also we see that there is no specific uh, age group that is um, uh, mentioned. Also, the promise of the Holy Spirit the, that we read uh, um, uh, in Acts chapter 2, verses 20, uh, 38 and 39, uh, it says, you know, the promise is for you and for your children, so for adults and for children who can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So here we see that it was Jesus' priority uh, that children be ministered to, uh, that he ministers to children, that they may be ministered to, and also the gospel to be preached to children, children to be baptized, and for them to receive the promise of the Holy uh, Spirit. So since Jesus, um, you know, uh, or since children, sorry, since children were such a great high priority for Jesus, uh, they should be also for the church as well today. Um, when I say this, uh, what I mean is that children's ministry in a church uh, should be a priority, means it should be well planned, it should be well executed. Uh, there should be a team of committed and trained teachers. There should be a relevant uh, curriculum that is catering to the intellect, the needs, the taste, um, uh, and the mindset of uh, the the present day children, you know, it's important that the curriculum is uh, catering to the present day uh, children. Uh, you know, we started writing our own children's church curriculum in 2013, and um, we've run over that. Uh, you know, some of the topics. Um, uh, you know, two times, I think, and I realized that after the pandemic, uh, we missed out on ministering to children uh, for almost two plus years. And um, so we started back with uh, the first topic. And I realized that, you know, we can't, uh, you know, dish out the same thing that we wrote for children in 2000. 13. We have to rewrite it, keeping in mind the present day uh, children, their mindsets, and um, you know what will really cater to their needs. So I, I'm, I started rewriting uh, the the curriculum. Uh, the first topic that we did was uh, the doctrine of God. We we call it as the nature of God. Now we're teaching about the Holy Spirit. So rewriting about the Holy Spirit. So it's important that you know we have a relevant curriculum that is catering to the intellect, the needs, the taste uh, of present day uh, children. Also make sure or ensure that we have a good worship team um, and activities and programs that are not just you know to um, kind of. Uh, uh, entertain children, but activities and programs that will enhance or build their relationship uh, with God and help them to grow in word and their faith life, just be built up, maybe nourished in the word and faith life, and help them to grow in the things of God. Okay. Any questions so far? Anyone has anything you would like to say? Any doubts? Anything? Okay, Jeffina has a question, but her mic is not working, so I can listen to her because she's an in-person student, and I can I I'll repeat the question to you all. Yes. So, yeah. So Jeffina is saying if children want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and they are born again, they've accepted Jesus. But how sure are you as a children's church minister or somebody who's ministering to them? How sure are you that 
you know, they they would really believe, they would really accept, they would really know. I think for me, uh, that question would not arise because uh, the very thing that they are taking that initiative to come, you know, uh, I can understand in my age, in my time, if my parents would tell me to do certain things, I would do it. But nowadays, children are different. You know, uh, it's they who decide, it's they who think, they who, um, you know, they want to be water baptized, if they want to uh, take baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, you know, it's they who tell their parents, and their parents also teach them about it. And then, of course, before we have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we teach them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, tell them. Uh, like when I had this child on Sunday, I spent a good 25 minutes just talking about Holy Spirit baptism and then uh, praying uh, with her. So she knows what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. And also we're teaching um, Holy Spirit to children. We also teach them about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We also teach them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We also have baptism of the Holy Spirit in Children's Church at APC. So. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, but, you know, uh, just by asking them a couple of questions, you can ensure, you know, and just them being there, you know that, yeah, they've thought about it. Yes. Okay, Jeffina has one more question. So in, in today's world, a lot of young pastors, like children are standing in the pulpit and they're teaching, which becomes trending like nothing. And uh, there was one small child whose father passed away. He was a pastor. He started preaching back uh, in Tamil Nadu. And that became very controversial. But when I heard his message, the doctrines were good. Like, how he's preaching is good. But the way people get it, uh, it's, they, they say so many things. It's, it's an age where you have to focus with the Christian, understand the world. Uh, it's not the time uh, for you to do anything. So, what are your views on it? I think it's very good. Uh, like he must be around with the fourth or fifth grade right now. And I also saw the very young people, like first standard, second standard, like six years, seven years, they are preaching, they are really preaching the world. Which makes my heart really happy. But I don't know, like, what are the comments that people pass? Is it right or not? Sort of okay, so. Um, uh... Uh, Jeffina is saying that nowadays children are very young age, grade one, grade two, uh, preaching, teaching. Uh, and he says, she says back in her own place in Tamil Nadu, you know, a uh, pastor who passed away, uh, his son is uh, in grade four or five and he preaches and teaches. And so people are saying, hey, he shouldn't be doing that. It's his age for him to go to Sunday school now to learn. Um, uh, so what do you all think about it? Jeffina is asking our thoughts, our inputs. What do you all think? Nibia, you have your hand raised up. You want to say something? Uh, yeah, ma'am. Actually, I had a question. Uh, but uh, for this, uh, I think uh, uh, it is acceptable if we see in the Bible, like, um, in the Old Testament, like people who became kings at the age of eight um, and such, depends upon the how the child has been brought up also. Uh, also, uh, the he might lack the experience and uh, to understand or comprehend uh, the issues of the people. So as a, I'm not sure as a pastoral uh, in that, uh, in those levels, if the child would be effective, mm, yeah. But of course, uh, if God has uh, ordained uh, it for the child, I think age is not a barrier. Uh, yes, thank you. Anyone else would like to share your thoughts? Yes, success. Um. I really enjoy this uh, this uh, topic about these children. You know, we have an uh, age group. We have teenager. We have children, kids. Uh, I, I want to use my own daughter as an example. She's six years old. My daughter is six years old, and uh, she loves reading Bible. So, what we do, we encourage her 
to read more Bible. And one day, after when she read Bible, we are praying, and she started speaking in tongues in the Holy Spirit. And I told my wife, I said, God has visited our daughter. If we can encourage them by studying the word of God, we are to plant a seed. God is to make the seed to spread in the life of the children. Because they are children, they, lo- they only know little. But if we can plant it for them, they can spread. We are talking about Holy Spirit. God himself is the one who will do the major work. I, my wife is a children teacher in our church. Yes, by special grace of God, I'm the geo. I told her, don't sit in the church. Make sure, because the children are more important to me, their lives is more important to me than adults. So go be the leader of the children church and impart the whole, in, in, in them the word of God. So when you see the student reading Bible, studying Bible, taking, they will ask you questions that you will ask yourself, who taught these children on these questions? So if we can be able to push more on the word of God to them, from then, you see, Holy Spirit will take over and will be in charge. That's my own thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, success. Uh, coming back to uh, Jeffina's uh, question, um, yes, when you know we can allow children to share, um, you know it's a good thing uh, that we inculcate that even the, when we have family times, family prayer, uh, for them to share what they have learned from the Word of God, and I'm sure it will be like you know like uh, baby understanding, a limited understanding of what they know of the word of God and it not be as profound and deep as an adult would, you know, expound the same scripture verse, it will much be on a greater level. But of course, they can share things which uh, can, you know, um, uh, uh, can minister to us, which we can learn. I have learned from children, you know, when they, the questions that they've asked, things that they have said. Yes. So, uh, we can allow them, but we also need to nurture and build and train them up. So, you know, after they have spoken, like you, you hear children, and uh, so this church, this specific boy who is, you know, preaching, like uh, whose father's passed away and was a pastor. Yes, you know, you can give him inputs. Hey, you know, you spoke on faith. So, you know, don't you think about what? What do you think about these aspects of faith? So you can build him up and teach him. So he needs to be tutored and trained and you know built up in the faith and in the word of uh, god not just let him go you know but continue to teach him and train him and also bring him to a place where he needs to know that he needs to learn more things that are more deeper truths on those specific topics that he can um, learn yes but shunning him away and saying hey you can't speak is uh, you don't have anything to say can you know totally uh, you know, disappoint the child, and the child may not want to continue to minister or even preach and teach later on in life. But give them the room, but also you know, know how to nurture and train them in the right way. Yes. Um, I hope that helped, uh, Sepina. Uh, John Paul says, out of curiosity, what's the age of the youngest child you have been baptized? seen uh, being baptized in the holy spirit uh, i think this child that we came for after the pandemic was maybe made a uh, three i can uh, you can i can ask the the parent and you know i can uh, let you know john paul uh, but i think she was in grade three very small yes grade three or grade four yeah but i can confirm that yes yes divya thank you ma'am um my question is uh, regarding uh, the secular worldviews that the kids uh, encounter, especially in their as they grow up uh, in the schools and other institutions uh, where they are taught about principle, uh, like uh, about the concepts that are uh, not biblical, uh, like evolution or. Um, uh, uh, how the how like um, principles of the society and things of that sort. Mm, so yes, lifestyles and all that they're seeing now. 
yeah correct so uh, how uh, like as parents or as teachers uh, uh, we can help the children to not only to uh, grow in uh, you know the christian uh, the biblical world views uh, and uh, uh, plus how uh, should we like teach them how to defend the faith like how to that apologetics kind of teaching uh, so what are your thoughts on that uh, good question um basically when you uh, don't wait for the child to come to you and you know maybe say it or even if they come with those questions uh, basically when you see this uh, happening uh, you know uh, on tv in the news or uh, a program uh, you can ask them what are their thoughts on it you know um, what do you think uh, and they can they will share their thoughts and then you can say what do you think uh, if if um, if Jesus, I mean Jesus is listening to our conversation. What do you think would uh, Jesus say regarding this? So what do you think he has told us about this in the Bible? So it's like listening to they will be listening to two viewpoints, and then you can actually tell them which you think is is the is the better of the two. I mean what the world. Uh, so basically debate discuss with them. Uh, uh, so what we see in 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 scripture is uh, in the Old Testament, you know, when Moses goes uh, to Pharaoh to the court, he uh, uh, God gives him some miracles to do. Right, put out your staff, and there'll be uh, snakes. And you know, uh, did God not know that when Moses is going to go and do this, perform this, that the magicians are also going to do it? God yeah. would have known, right? Yeah. God would have known. But he still goes ahead and tells him, hey, go and do this before Pharaoh. And what does Pharaoh do? He just sits down there and says, you know, I, I don't think this is any great miracle you're doing. Just claps his hand and tells his, uh, you know, magicians to come and they do, they do the same thing. And he mocks uh, 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 Moses and his God. And what happens? Uh, Moses' snake swallows up all their snakes. Okay, and they're able to do the first two miracles, but later on they're not able to do it. And the magician says, "Hey, this is the finger of God. This is the hand of God." So um, you know, children, uh, we think you know they don't know the truth. They're not able to recognize the truth, uh, but they they are able to. Okay, because uh, you know we are praying for them. They have the spirit of God in them, and uh, the spirit of God, or their even their conscience, like we read in Romans, we learned in Romans chapter one. You know, we can't say there is uh, people cannot deny the existence of God because they have their inbuilt the inbuilt indicator is their conscience, and God has you know revealed to him uh, to, about himself in uh, in nature. You know, nature reveals the attributes of the invisible attributes of God. We learn that in Romans chapter one. So they they inbuilt conscience, the Holy Spirit that is speaking to them and telling them, "Hey, this is right." So it's important to discuss with them and tell them, and not just like press the views over them, but actually get them to think. And then you know, children will come to a place where they say, "Yeah, this is what." Is right. This is what we should be uh, doing. Like you know, uh, we've had children uh, when I minister to them in children's church. They come and say, "Auntie, can we do this?" Um, and then I just look at them and smile, and they say, "We know it's not the right thing, but we just thought we'll ask you, uh, but we know that you will say no." And so they already know because they know, hey, this is not what we should be doing now. This is not the right thing. But uh, you know, they know what is right and wrong, but they're just trying to you know they ask and they want to have you know do uh, have their way sometimes so all you do is just smile at them and then they say okay auntie we'll just go and do this and they'll go ahead and do the right thing so important to teach them the word of god what the word of god talks about this but not overemphasizing what the world is saying but when you hear things like this about what the world is saying, already start teaching them what the, the word of God is saying. So when they know what the word of God is saying, they're going to be able to, you know, um, uh, connect that when they uh, come across the worldviews and they're able to stand by the word of God because that is what they have heard, that is what is the truth, and that is what they know is um, right. That is why Paul, when he is, when we, we learn in, uh, as we look at First Timothy, and study First Timothy and Second Timothy. You know, Paul is saying, you know, don't uh, waste time 
arguing. Don't waste time talking about all of these false doctrines, false teachers, uh, you know, what is the wrong teachings, because, you know, it's basically all these arguments are going to lead to nowhere, but just teach the truth, teach the doctrine, teach the word of God. So all we do is teach them the word of God. And when we know that our children are going to encounter these worldviews, already start teaching them what the word of God is saying. So when they encounter those worldviews, they know what the truth is and they can, you know, they will stand by the truth. Thank you, ma'am. That's really helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, any more questions? Okay, if not, we'll move on. Um, uh, see that children are the greatest mission field. Okay, uh, you know, D.L. Moody, uh, D.L. Moody was a great evangelist. Uh, he comes back one day from a tent a revival meeting. And um, all of them are very curious to know, uh, you know, how many people were saved during his tent revival meeting. Uh, so he told them two and a half people were saved. He tells them two and a half people were saved. So whoever was talking to him replied, oh, do you mean two adults and one child. So two adults and a half was a child. So D.L. Modi responded, no, two children and one adult. And so he tells this to the person who asked this question. He says, when you save a child, you save a life, a whole life. So for him, um, the two people were children who have the whole life. You know, so when you save a child, uh, you know, you have the, the child has a whole life to live, to impact, to influence others for uh, the kingdom of God. So, you know, children are the greatest uh, mission field. And so ministering to children, uh, you know, teaching them uh, is uh, you are in the right place where you are in the right mission field where you are impacting their um, lives. Uh, the next one is that children, you know, um, Okay, let me just uh, present this slide. Uh, of all the people who have made a decision for Christ, 85% did so by the age of um, 18. Okay. Children need a firm uh, foundation. Uh, you know, we read in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, direct a child in the way that he needs to go. And when he's older, he will not leave or depart from it. Uh, so the time we spend uh, with children at from a very young age impacts the rest of their lives because the things that are instilled in them as uh, children, you know, it won't be forgotten even when they grow uh, older okay so children's ministry basically our time with children or teaching children allows us to pour uh, core values into their lives while they're still growing up so that when they grow older you know they will know these values they will live by these values even if they kind of go away you know these values will be there because the holy spirit will remind them will bring them back and um, as we teach them, you know, uh, scripture, Bible verses uh, to memorize, you know, they will be able to recall those uh, in later times, in times of difficulty, because the Holy Spirit will bring that back to memory. And uh, most of the scripture that I have learned, I did so when I was a child, uh, because we, I come from a church where children's ministry was given good priority. Um, uh, a good focus and uh, we I just impacted so was so impacted as a child uh, by the children's ministry Sunday school and all the teachers who great made such a great impact and the uh, amount of scripture they made us to study and learn and you know um, I still remember that I, I can just narrate uh, scripture passages psalms uh, the books of the bible I can just rattle it off you know all that because uh, at that very young age uh, we just learned it. And uh, yes, it, uh, you know, when scripture is uh, taught, uh, nowadays we, I find it difficult, my age, a uh, little challenging to, and difficult to remember verses that I learn, I, even though I still keep learning a few scripture passages. But the ones that I, 
uh, learned as a childhood, even in my sleep, I can just narrate it because it's just so back of my um, mind. So good time um, uh, for us to teach children uh, scripture passages. And I like, uh, you know, the uh, the Matuma Church. The Matuma Church is uh, basically comprises of uh, uh, the group people group um, uh, Malayalis. You know, they have this. Uh, 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 time when uh, you know uh, uh, they get, they just get their children to learn scripture passages, and you know children narrate Psalm 119 word perfect, word perfect. There's not a word they miss, and they have a competition, and uh, it's amazing the way it's, they learn scripture and they can just narrate passages of scripture like that word perfect it just blows my mind and they just do such a wonderful job in teaching scripture uh, to children and for them to narrate and to memorize scripture wonderful job done by the matuma uh, church so you know good to get our children to memorize as much as scripture as uh, uh, possible because time is also running out when we will no longer have bibles in our hand and you know the, the truth of scripture that they memorize will come back to memory Okay, um, there's a season in a person's uh, life when they're most open to learning what it means to trust God. And the season, they say, is somewhere between um, the age of 4 to 14 years. You know, it's called um, uh, the 414 window. I don't know if you've heard about the 414 window. Uh, it's, a, it's a time, an age when people or children are more moldable than they can ever be in their lifetime. Uh, you know, so during the season of life is when children are forming their understanding of the world, of relationships, of love, of God. Um, uh, so it's a season when uh, children are easily influenced, can be easily moldable, and we should intentionally ensure that they get the right impression and they learn the uh, truth. Because what is rooted in the heart of a child, um, you know, uh, is almost impossible to uproot in the life of an um, adult. So, you know, when uh, God says, uh, you know, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter um, under heaven, I think he really he did mean everything, you know. Uh, hence, this a season. Uh, when a child is between 4 to 14 years old, uh, is uh, when we need to focus our efforts on helping them uh, to place their faith and their trust in Jesus and to have a personal relationship with them. So this 4 to 14 years um, is a very important age and many people call this as a 414 window. And what we do uh, during this window uh, may be the most important thing that a church uh, does. So just imagine Imagine, you know, how many adult problems would be solved if every child in their primary section, you know, they left children's church with this deep assurance in their heart that they have a heavenly father who loves them, you know, and the same child who is in the primary section who's grown up with this deep assurance that they have a heavenly father who loves them, they will go into adulthood with the same thing that, hey, my heavenly father loves me you know and how many adult problems can be solved if this truth is so ingrained and they live by this truth by this identity what if every child in the junior level you know left knowing that they have a place um Oh, sorry, they left knowing uh, the junior level uh, that, you know, knowing that they can place their trust in Jesus for every in every area of their lives. And the same child grows up to be an adult and knows that has this deep assurance that, you know, they can trust Jesus in every area of their lives. So how many adult problems would be solved? You know, what if every high school student left knowing their place in God's story, you know, and having their uh, uh, having made a lifetime commitment to uh, serving Christ or, you know, uh, they left uh, high school knowing that they are part of God's wonderful plan, God's uh, 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 purpose and their plan for their life is great and he has a plan and uh, a story and in the history of God that they are of priority, they are of importance and, uh, you know, they leave high school uh, uh, with uh, making a lifetime commitment to serving Christ and they when they grow up into adults you know imagine the kind of impact uh, they will life and imagine the kind of uh, um, 
you know, um, uh, 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 strength they would have to face the challenges even as an uh, adult. So what if everything we did for children focused, you know, around them, just building them up in the faith and winning them to uh, Christ, we will have a church, uh, you know, uh, in the coming years that are so, so strong, uh, so strongly built in the faith and so strong in the uh, word of God and in their relationship and their trust with God. Okay. So we'll stop here. Uh, we'll continue next class. Anyone has any questions before we end class? Anything you want to say? Okay. Not thank you for uh, joining class.